Okay, hello again, everyone. Um, you may remember back in, I think it was October, that I loaded, uploaded a Let's Play of the Carbon-14 baiting sim. Now, when I did that, uh, somehow I just managed to record my face and not actually the game. So, now I'm going to give this, or finally get a chance to maybe give this, a retry. And now again, like with the last one, I haven't actually had a chance to uh, script this really, um, so I'm coming at this completely fresh, uh, which I think you know makes it a bit more, a bit more real. Uh, that's very many. There we go. So again, why on an archaeology channel am I doing a let's play of a game? Well. For starters, as well as being an archaeology enthusiast, I'm also a gaming enthusiast, and also it's an archaeology game, so what more could you really want? Uh, but partly I'm also really, really interested about the depictions of archaeology in games and in the media, in what's been come to known as media archaeology or, or, or archaeo gaming when you're talking about uh, talking about gaming specifically. And you know, dating sims seem to be a, a popular game type at the moment and I thought you know why not let's see what it's like so again this is going to be a very short test video it's not going to be as long as my previous video which was almost an hour um, so I guess uh, let's actually let's just go quickly to this have a look at the steam page uh, if it will load okay no it's not going to load I'll put more information about the um, game down in the down in the description. Uh, if anyone's interested to know what uh, software I'm using to record this, it's action. Okay, so let's start. Would you like to turn off mini games? Why would you want to do that? Mini games are awesome. So let's Use original dialogue, I think that's okay. There's a reason why we're drawn together here, coming clear. Ooh. All right, there we go. Oops, me not reading it. Ah, oh, yes, this game uh, doesn't have any sound acting, so uh, I'm gonna have to try and do all the voices. Uh, we are a character called Melissa. Ah, is this it? I glanced at the map which highlighted road names along with a star next to my destination. After comparing, I came to the conclusion this wasn't the place, but I was close. The village Colliens was clustered by the Musée River and I paused to admire the pretty garden surrounding the houses. I was oddly calm, despite being over 5,000 miles from my Californian home, reality of being in another country yet to sink in. Oh, come on, you should again. Up ahead, there was a clearing separated from the road by a fence. On the other side, a few tents were stationed behind a two-storey building. I spot an open chain gate with a billboard in front of the driveway. It said, Grotta da Calian on Trey. That's the place! A familiar figure stood by the entrance. She was currently talking to a middle-aged man, but when she saw me, she gave me a cheerful wave as I ran up to her. Ooh. Ah, what did I do? Turn. Accidentally skips a dialogue there, sorry. With one hand on my bag handle, I exchanged a half-embrace with my professor. 
I didn't know you'd already arrived. If you called me, I would have come and picked you up at the train station. <sighs> you mentioned that the cave wasn't far, so I wanted to soak in all the scenery and enjoy the sights. I'm glad you made it safely. Was it difficult taking the train? Nope. Well, I did try to practice my French at the ticket station until the person said he could speak English. He pointed me in the right direction. That's not my experience of French people. They generally don't like speaking in English. At least you'll be able to brush up on your French. You'll find it not too different from Spanish. You'll catch on quickly. I groaned inwardly. My Spanish wasn't the most fluent, but I mentioned it in my interview when discussing how I would cope with staying in Belgium without knowing French. I glanced around, then turned to Sherry. Where's Paige? Didn't she say she would be arriving earlier today? Or was that tomorrow? I got an email from her yesterday saying there was a family emergency. She won't be able to participate this summer. I failed to hi hide my disappointment. Paige was the other student from my university who planned to attend this field school. We even worked out trips to do every weekend during our stay. I mustered up a weak smile. Mm. It's understandable. Can't be helped if it's family. <laughs> then it would just be me. Ooh. Sherry gestured to the other person present to change the subject. Before I forget, let me introduce Professor Augustin, Augustin Dupont's Chief Archaeologist of Kaelin Cave. I do apologise if I'm coming across a bit weird. I am recovering from a uh, coldy flu thing at the moment. I eagerly extended my arm for a handshake. Everything I heard about Mr. Dupont was from Cherie, and she mentioned that he was a revered Belgian archaeologist. <laughs> it's an honour to meet you. I am Melissa Flores. A junior. I look forward to seeing Chevy's students every summer. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm not going to attempt to do any accents in this. Mr. Dupont spoke with a heavy French accent, but I had no trouble comprehending him. <laughs> Have you gone over everything with Chevy? When the students from the year arrive tomorrow, they'll get their first lecture before dinner. Yes, I'll still attend the lecture though. If I was going to be submerged in the language, I might as well start by hanging out with the local students. Mr. Dupont hide my suitcase. It must have been a time in trip. Come, we will show you around the back. Students will be spending three the, will be sending the weekdays here. We reached a clearing and I spotted some the same tents. Most clustered around the perimeter against the bushes and a few were closer to the building. <laughs> Feel free to pick one. These are for the students who don't ha own their own tents or, mat or mattresses, or couldn't bring them. The chief archaeologist gave a nod, then excused himself. He probably had other matters to attend to before the students arrived. Now, I don't know about you, but my experiences of being at a field school are you really don't want small tents if you're going to be staying there for summer. I mean, I was very lucky enough when I went on my field school trip to be able to use an old scout patrol tent which you could actually stand up in and as I was there for six, eight, eight weeks uh, that was definitely an advantage and some of those look really flimsy I studied the tents next to the building and thought about my phone which was still in aeroplane mode how's the Wi-Fi here? oh yes, always important to know about the Wi-Fi <laughs> If you stay in that tent, you might get Wi-Fi. It doesn't extend much here in the back. If you bought a laptop, you can leave it in the laboratory. It's been done before. Everything gets locked up at night for safekeeping. Fair enough. At least I can keep in touch with my parents. Once you've finished, come back to the front and we'll give you a tour. We will get to see the cave today. It's already locked up, so you'll have to wait until morning. And the anticipation builds. I thanked her and started unpacking 
There was already an air mattress, pillow and sleeping bag in place and it only took a few moments to settle in. Now, again, that's not a lot of stuff for an entire summer on a field school. And it's all far too neat. My tent was never that neat. Done! Grabbing a small storage bag, I zipped my tent and hurried over to the front of the building. <laughs> anyway, this is the main entrance. This will take you to the... She opened the door and my eyes widened when I saw display after display. So it was a museum. And remarkably, a tiny one after one loop, I was already back to the entrance and I wanted to examine the displays more, but figured I'd have more free time later. Now, looking at this, I already see a few odd things about this museum, but I'll come back to that later, in a, in a later episode. Sherry and I ascended the stairs by the entrance. This room, it's more of a multi-purpose room. It can be used for lectures, and it's where findings are cleaned if the weather isn't suitable outside. <laughs> a crowd of storage bag, wondering how to bring up the question. Fortunately, Sherry noticed. Something important in there? Um, the extra insulin I won't be using yet. It needs to avoid extreme temperatures. Is there somewhere safe I can store it? Oh, of course, thank you for reminding me. Feel free to use the indoor kitchen since it's restricted to staff members. Augustine has granted you access since he knows you're diabetic. Now, I, I do find it slightly weird that they've decided to introduce the idea that she has diabetes. Not that there's nothing wrong with that, but it just seems like an unnecessarily characterization unless it's going to play a particularly important part in the story of the Dayton Sim. It just, it just seems a bit of an unusual thing to add, but there we go. Of course, the most important thing you need when doing any form of archaeology, even if it's a Dayton Sim, is coffee. She led me to the back, give me a chance to store the insulin bottles in the fridge. And to conclude the tour, this is the lab. This is where most of the research takes place. <laughs> How many students will be here? It varies. There can be as many as 40 or as few as 20 students from the age are required to, to devote at least four weeks working at an archeo archaeological site, regardless of their major. Therefore, we may get a lot of music and art students too. The other students should be arriving soon. How's the jet lag? Not bad so far, a little fatigued, but nothing else. Now, as a quick point on the lab, I don't know if the person who drew the artwork for this had been in many archaeological labs, but that's far too neat and tidy. I know no archaeological lab which is that, tight, which is that neat and tidy. I'm going to be up all night, aren't I? Worst case scenario is I'll give you an extra day to prepare yourself for the dig. You have reviewed the material I've given you, right? Um, yes, I've looked at it. Is there anything else you'd like to go over? It's been a month since my last lecture. Okay, let's get a little bit of background on this type. Okay, place. Let's inquire about Kaelin Cave. Can you remind me about the site again? I know it's famous for discovering the remains of a Neanderthal dating back 125,000 years ago. I am really, really irritated by this spelling of Neanderthal. It's Neanderthal. I know that is an accepted spelling. I just really, really hate it. Correct. The site has established two Neanderthal occupations from different times. This is mainly Middle Paleolithic site with sediments ranging from 300,000 years ago to as recent as 4,000 years ago. Nice, I can't wait to discover a tooth or something. If you do, it will likely belong to a cave bear. Cave bear? Are those remains found often? Yes, 99% of all fauna animal remains collected are cave bear. Even so, I'm sure that's something. Not many people can say they've dug up a cave bear. <laughs> okay. How long have you been digging here? How long have you been part of the team? Me? Hmm. 
I started working with Augustine about 10 years ago. We go way back. That's how I established the Kaelin Cave internship. Our university has developed a reputation for bringing over exceptional students. And it's just me this year. I hope I'm able to live up to the expectations. I'm sure you'll do fine. Go over the itinerary. What's the schedule exactly? How long does the dig go till? How long does the dig go till? That just seems clumsy. It's ongoing until the end of August, and you'll be leaving at the end of next month, was it? Right, on Saturday. I know only four weeks are required for the field school, but I thought I'll learn more if I stayed for eight. Dates aside, breakfast is served in the morning at 7.30. Cave and lab activities go from 8 till noon, and then there's an hour for lunch. Activities resume at 1 till 5. That seems pretty accurate for field school uh, day, actually. <laughs> Dinner starts at 7. And uh, yeah, that sounds about right. On the weekends, both students and excavation team leave for home. The cave and museum are locked up during this time. <laughs> The back of the building will be accessible to you, of course. And if you prefer, you can sleep on the second floor if you don't like the idea of sleeping outside alone. Again, I'm sorry it's just you. I usually get more students than this. I'll be okay on my own. Promise. I'd like to go over the grading system one more time. Did you bring a journal? I sure did. Essentially, I'll be grading you on your performance, both in the cave and working at the lab. I'd like you to record your findings and experiences in the journal. I expect it to be turned in every fri Friday evening, and I'll give it back the following Monday. If you're sick, you're allowed to miss some days. I won't deduct marks for that. However, there's no excuse for playing truant. Don't forget to take breaks often while you excavate in the cave. There's a risk of getting hypoxia due to less oxygen. I'm not just marking your academics, I'll also be seeing how often you volunteer. Volunteer? Yes, students use the outdoor kitchen are in charge of preparing the meals along with cleanup that follows. Yep, I remember that as well. I don't expect you to volunteer all the time since that does cut into your excavation and lab time, but once a week is ideal. <laughs> Let's ask about Augustine, shall we? Is Augustine easily to get on with? He seems friendly. He is for the most part, but he takes an over... He's like an overprotective father when it comes to the cave. He's been supervising it for over two decades and is the leading expert. It's his baby. I'll be helping you, of course, and as far as I'm concerned, you're my student, not his. Any problem that come up, I'll discuss with you personally. Ah, stop doing that. No! I meekly nodded, although now I was worried about making a mistake. After all, this was all new to me. I noticed in your lectures you, were, you used Neanderthal. I've always heard it as Neanderthal. Is it a preference? A preference, and there's no H sound when it's pronounced in French and German. It's something I picked up when I started working in Europe. However, both are accepted spellings in academic journals. Here, it'll be referred to as Neanderthal. Now, on an editorial note, I'll be referred to it as Neanderthal, because, again, I just hate that pronunciation and spelling. <laughs> right, Neanderthal it is. Okay, looks like that's all. I think I'm good for now. Great, however, if any questions come up, feel free to ask. We heard activity outside complete with loud voices and footsteps on the gravel. It sounds like the students from Liège are here. Augustine will start the lecture soon. Huh? No chance to unpack or get ready for, or anything like that? No, all the students were given instructions on when to arrive. Punctuality is valued greatly here. The will lecture now and the students will settle in after. <laughs> I'll be on my way. Some students stood while others sat on the stone tiles in front of the building. A 
two loons against their luggage, but they all formed a semicircle around Augustine. There are about 30 faces, and I wondered how the camping grounds would contain them all. They all fell silent when Augustine began to speak. <laughs> Although I picked up the key words such as archaeologie, Grotte and Sedamont, much of it was lost on me. He repeated Calcari a lot too. However, his gestures were vibrant and I sensed a passion behind his voice. It got me looking forward to excavating tomorrow. <laughs> so, now it looks like we have to try it and use these activities in our schedule to try and increase our ratings. That's what I did. So I guess in the morning we'll study, study, inquire, oh, I guess, study, study, and maybe browse the internet just to reduce a little bit of stress. Maybe study, inquire. Play catch, we always need a bit of uh, but we could save that for a weekend, couldn't we? So maybe we'll socialize again. There, study, socialize, maybe take Friday a little bit more gently. Explore the museum in the morning, that seems like a good thing to do. Explore the town. Maybe email in the evening. So it looks like we set out our weekly schedule each week and then we try and I think we try to fit these in. I don't think it that necessarily dictates how the gameplay works. But I think it's a mixture of both. So we'll click play and see what happens, I guess. Let's play. Like Sherry said, there was another lecture in the morning, complete with a whiteboard and Augustine demonstrating how to use a trowel. It was all in French and Sherry was kind enough to translate some key phrases or remind me that I covered with, this, her, with her before the trip. That's sort of a bit weird. Yeah, you know, you covered this before, before a trip. Oh, I'm not going to show you how to do it again. The students were divided with one half, me included, to head for the cave, while the other group would stay behind for lab work. The walk to the cave was roughly ten minutes, passing through a narrow path in the sloped woods. The trickier sections had cement stairs installed along with handles to prevent slipping. <laughs> When we reached an ordinary looking shed, Augustine pulled out his keys. I realised this was the cave entrance, or at least the artificial part of it. Once you're inside, please spread out. I can explain how to wet screen. We repeated the instructions in French as we filed through one by one. There was a raised counter in the middle with plastic containers suspended on wooden supports. So this is where the wit screening takes place. Looks like it can only fit two people at a time. I wonder how often it will be used. Augustine just dem demonstrated by lowering an empty metal sieve into a plastic container, grabbing a hose. He reminded, he mind, washing the screen and rooting through pretend dirt. As much as I tried to pay attention, the language barrier tested my focus and my eyes started to wander. 
I know that feeling. What posters? Posters depicted sedimentary layers, cave bears, and even proudly displayed pictures from previous excavations. They were definitely useful for references. I could read French. If I could read French, okay. Ouz de Cavernet must mean cave bear. At least I figured that one out. A shuffle ball. We brought to attention and people were gathering their buckets and tools and knee pads. <laughs> I followed and carried everything in my own bucket, including a sheet of paper encased in a plastic bag. But we were to the cave opened leading down a narrow industrial catwalk suspended over the abyss. I wonder what the risk assessment and health and safety were for that walkway. It kind of looks like it bends really awkwardly there. Or maybe that's just the angle of the slope. <laughs> Once I walked through, the temperature dropped to a cool chill and I zipped up my hoodie. Augustine directed students to various locations I'll share. We carefully slipped by and I followed. The cave opened up further, with numerous stalactites and stalagmites everywhere. The cat railing, catwalk railing disappeared where the ladders connected, or when it branched off into other segments of the cave. <laughs> Sherry, where will I dig? Sherry leaned over the rail and pointed to one of the deeper parts. You'll be digging here. It's a 125,000 year old layer. The very same one where they discovered the Neanderthal mandible. What? I'll be digging in such an important place already? Despite my nerves, I felt giddy inside. Sherry climbed down the ladder and, tra and I trailed behind her. At the bottom of the ladder was another catwalk positioned exactly in the middle. Now that my eyes adjusted to the dim light, I noticed that there were strings and cords hung everywhere in a specific pattern with notes nailed into the soil. Sherry brought me to the end of the catwalk where I was Yet, there was, where was yet another ladder, ladder, but this time much shorter. You'll be digging on the right side here. <laughs> here was a rather cosy looking pit, preferably perfectly dug square. Two to three people could probably move around freely in the space. It was almost right under the main catwalk, higher up too. This is your Carré D32. Carré D32. Carré means square. Everything is separated into a grid system, starting from the entrance of the cave, the uppermost left, right, it goes A1, B1, and so forth. That makes sense. It explains the lines and the dang dangling from ceiling, too. They're for measuring. Correct. Shall we take a closer look at the photographs for this row? Should Shall we take a closer look? The photographs for this row should be done already. I'll be right back. You can go ahead and set your items down. She retreated while I placed a bucket next to the short ladder. I descended, then grabbed the tools before I hopped off the last step. The layer I'd be working on was mostly dirt with the odd large rocks sticking out here and there. It would be easy to dig. It looks like quite a few odd rocks sticking out here and there, actually. In fact, it looks about half rock, half dirt. By the time Shimmy you returned, I had already had my knee pads out and the piece of paper next to me. <laughs> Here we are, the pictures of your square. She handed it to me. I could tell it was printed off in the highest resolution possible, fully inked and glossy. What do we use photographs for? First thing first, we distinguish each layer and outline it on the photograph. Once Augustine and myself checked it over, you can go ahead and start excavating. The picture is an irreplaceable reference and you'll find yourself relying on it often. Please don't lose it or get it tarnished. Sadly, Augustine is short-staffed at the moment. I'll be helping the other students since most are new to this too. Is there anything you'd like to go over? Ooh. Type of excavation. I've always heard about horizontal digging, but vertical? It was Augustine's idea. Stratigraphy, the study of rock layers, is extremely important. An excavation method ensures each layer is examined in great detail. It's not a particularly new idea to do vertical like that. It's also easier to compare the strata when you can view it as a whole. If you want to know about the cave in general or its 
stratigraphical approaches, you can task you can ask Hendrik when he arrives. He's the resident geologist and Augustine's nephew. An archaeologist with a geologist an archaeologist with a nephew who's a geologist, that must cause a little bit of kerfuffle at family dinners. At least he's not a paleontologist. Details regarding the document paper. What is this? I quickly glanced at the first word at the top. Fish thing, exactly. I know we got over how it's used to record finds, but... I flipped it open and seen a coordinate grid with zero in the lower left hand corner and ending in a hundred for x and y axes. Axes. It looks complicated. Ah, that. A little bit of math will come into play. You'll be measuring where you find the remains using both x and y along with the altitudes, altitude z. x runs parallel to the entrance while y goes from front to back. Every section is divided into hundred by hundred square, me square centimetres. Oh yes, I forgot that we'll be using the metric system. My mind's going to have it's going to have fun adjusting to it. A grid helps and you record what you find under this list labelled nature. Each fish or document has its own number already written along with the year. You'll throw out the carré number, the layer number, and today's date. Oh, and write down the photo number on it so there's no mix ups. Did you get all that? That's actually quite a good recording system. It's all very nice and neatly referenced. Um, that's a lot to take in, but I think I grasp it. I hope I remember as well. It's easier once you actually start, and I'll be here to help. Remember, one fish per layer. What do you do once you find an art artifact or bone? So what do I do once I find a Neanderthal tooth? First, don't pluck it out like some amateur archaeologist. You'll lose the context. Actually, another thing here, I am glad that they have the proper British spelling of archaeologist rather than American ar spelling of archaeology. Measure it before you remove it, number it, and then carefully wrap it in tinfoil. There'll be a plastic bag you can use to store it all for all the findings. How do you number the findings? Just by the order in which you find it, one, two, or three, jot it down on the piece of paper and stick it in the tin foil as well so it won't get lost. When you finish excavating the entire layer, seal everything found into that plastic bag along with the completed fiche. Believe me, you'll be relieved to finally finish a layer. Handling each layer. When I escape vertically, I just focus on one layer at a time, right? That's the ideal approach, however layers aren't perfect straight lines like in textbook diagrams. They widen and narrow, slant or disappear completely. If you come to a situation where you have to dig through more than one layer, keep separate fiches and buckets, never mix the context contents. <laughs> because once you fill up a bucket, you'll be wet screening the material. Anything you've overlooked first time, such as bone, will then be deposited in a cup marked with that layer's name. <laughs> What happens if you find something extremely important, like in the Antifal skull? I admit the image of suddenly pulling out a complete skull out of the screening area was rather comical. And you'd better hope Augustine doesn't see it. You never want to find flint or burnt bone in your tamassage, which is French for screening. Keep a careful eye out, and if you do find something you're unsure of, ask me or a fellow archaeologist. I think I got it. I'm good, Sherry. Wonderful. I'll give you some time to get familiar with your space. If you're struggling, remember you can adjust the heat lamps. Also, the photographs contrasts have been altered to help distinguish the sedimentary layers easily. I'll be back shortly. I glanced down at the photograph before comparing it to the vertical wall in front of me. No matter how closely I looked, everything was brown, brown, brown and more brown. How am I supposed to tell the difference of this brown layer from, another, from that brown layer? Not deterred, I picked up a pencil and began marking the more distinct sediments. Eventually it became less solid brown and I could see the reds, the faint yellows within the soil. I was so focused that I barely registered that I was not alone anymore. A tall student stood by the square next to mine, already engaged in identifying the sediments. 
I paid him no heed until I became stumped on whether I was looking at one lay or two. Quietly peering at his profile, he seemed to be rather familiar with the system. I guess it wouldn't hurt to ask him, or at least try to communicate. Um, can I get your opinion on something? Quiet student. Uh, hello, uh, bonjour. Still no reaction. I reached out and gave him a gentle tap on the shoulder. Excuse, whoa. The touch jolted him so abruptly that I retracted my hand and he whirled around and glared at me. We oui, avez-vous besoin de... Quill Cushu? Annoyed student. He changes his name. Uh, sorry, I don't speak French. Uh, non parlez non? Oh, Anglais. French speaking student. Don't think you really need to change his name each time. <laughs> Although it is quite a nice touch, I guess. He placed his photograph on top of his square. Did you need something? Aloof. Yeah, actually, I'm trying to figure out the layers, and I can't tell if this is if this is one. I gently traced the soil and then pretended to pinch the air to give the idea of width. Or two, it seems reddish at the top. He grabbed his trowel, giving the vibe of a serious, no-nonsense person. Once I shuffled out of the way, he examined the area I'd indicated. Two, this stratum is more red, as you said, but gradually disappears around here. He etched a small line mark with... I blinked as I recognised the differences and then nodded gratefully. Thanks so much. I mean, I sort of figured, but I wasn't sure either. It's nice to get a second opinion. I gave him a cheerful smile, but he remained impassive. He seemed baffled when I reached out to initiate a proper handshake. I'm Melissa. I'm one of uh, the only foreign students here, if it wasn't obvious already with my language skills. Reluctantly, he switched his trout to his left hand and we gave a solid handshake before letting go. Kyla. And that was it. With nothing else to work on from his introduction, I decided to bring up his skills. I'm guessing you're an aspiring archaeologist. Do you appear to know what you're doing? He returned to his side of the square and knelt down, grabbing his photograph. Yes, this is my fourth time here, so I'm acquainted with the subject. And you, especially since you're not from around here? Well... I'm not entirely certain yet. I sort of stumbled into anthropology and I can't tell if I want to get into archaeology, forensics or cultural anthropology. I took a field school because I had a feeling that it would be a deciding fact on whether I go physical or cultural. Oh, I see. It does explain why you didn't pay much attention earlier. Disinterest seeped through his voice and I had a feeling any impression he had of me fell like a stone. Well, well I know I, I learned a lot from the field school anyway. I don't plan to waste any opportunity. I let out a nervous chuckle. He obviously wasn't convinced and I dropped the topic. Since we're excavated next to each other, that makes us square mates. Or would that be carré mates? Either way, I look forward to working alongside with you. He looked confused but simply gave a mechanical nod. Yeah, sure. Even his last words felt artificial, and I lost him to this little world of microstratigraphy. <laughs> I guess he values his concentration. I meant to remind myself to bring my earbuds for next time. I had a feeling we wouldn't be making much small talk outside of excavations. The rest of the day was pretty uneventful. It was mostly a long wait for my photograph to be approved by Sherry, and then I got hit by the jet lag. Despite my rise, Sherry said she would not deduct marks if I napped until dinner, although she did scold me for forgetting my journal. I scanned the tables and manoeuvred to where Sherry sat. I sco scooted to a spot on the bench and silently started on my meal. After a few bites, I poked at the pasta dejectedly and sighed. Now I really wish Paige was here, and we promised to do so many things together too. I glanced up hopefully at Sherry. I felt bad, but she was the only oasis in this unfamiliar place, and I clung to it. Not only that, aside from Kyla, none of the other students greeted me or even tried to converse with me. I guess it was obvious that I didn't attend the same university. 
Will I fit in? The question was more to myself, but Shelly overheard. Worried? The students here can be reserved, but I'm sure there'll be a few brave ones who like to practice their English with you. <laughs> They're probably too focused from the lectures and the tasks right now. True, I'm sure once we're all used to the routine here, I'll have more chances to mingle. I ate with gusto, feeling confident now. When I finished, Sherry glanced at my empty plate. Here, yeah, I'll take out for you. Try and get some rest. Her concern cheered me up, and I chided myself for feeling anxious when I had barely arrived. I retreated to my tent as I settled down, contemplating about tomorrow. A musical tone, tune disrupted the quiet night. It was quickly silenced, but I knew the catchy introduction, the theme to Ishtira, anyway. I grabbed my 3DP. No, I didn't leave my system on or anything. Was someone else playing? I might as well play some Ishitira off. A little grinding will do me some good. 3DP. Is that their attempt at not using a brand name? That's really bad. I picked up the game and the first notes of the theme tune blared loudly. I'd forgotten that my earbuds weren't hooked into the handheld. I slid the volume down, hoping it didn't startle anyone. The low spirits I felt earlier today melted away to the warm colours of the game. Right. Well. I think. We will save it there. To continue another time. Well, I hope that was at least of interest to someone. Again, I apologise, this wasn't scripted and I am still recovering from a horrible cold-like thing. I'll put some more description about uh, the actual game down in the uh, description. And a few, sorry, there was a few technical difficulties early on, especially with the, mainly my computer freezing, which meant we uh, accidentally skipped some of the chat bits and pieces. I'll try to be a little bit more scripted for the next time and do an intro at the beginning a bit more about the game. Um, until next time, thank you for watching. Uh, I guess though I should uh, say something socially responsible. As you know, that's what you're supposed to do at the end of videos. Um, so, uh, don't go eating each other. <laughs>